The Mishnah or Mishnah, Hebrew, study by repetition, from the verb shanah snach, or to study and review, also secondary, is the first major written collection of the Jewish oral traditions known as the Oral Torah. It is also the first major work of rabbinic literature. The Mishnah was redacted by Judah the Prince at the beginning of the 3rd century CE in a time when, according to the Talmud, the persecution of the Jews and the passage of time raised the possibility that the details of the oral traditions of the Pharisees from the Second Temple period 536 BCE to 70 CE would be forgotten. Most of the Mishnah is written in Mishnaic Hebrew, while some parts are Aramaic. The Mishnah consists of six orders sederim, singular seder sedur, each containing seven to twelve tractates misektot, singular meseshe misked, lit. web, sixty-three in total, and further subdivided into chapters and paragraphs or verses. The word Mishnah can also indicate a single paragraph of the work, i.e. the smallest unit of structure in the Mishnah. For this reason the whole work is sometimes called in the plural, Mishnao. Topic. Structure Topic. The term, Mishnah, originally referred to a method of teaching by presenting topics in a systematic order, as contrasted with Midrash, which followed the order of the Bible. As a written compilation, the order of the Mishnah is by subject matter and includes a much broader selection of halakhic subjects, and discusses individual subjects more thoroughly, than the Midrash. The Mishnah consists of six orders sederim, singular seder sedur, each containing seven to twelve tractates misektot, singular meseshe misked, lit. web. 63 in total. Each meseshe is divided into chapters parakim, singular parek, and then paragraphs mishneo, singular mishnah. In this last context, the word Mishnah means a single paragraph of the work, i.e. the smallest unit of structure, leading to the use of the plural mishneo for the whole work. Because of the division into six orders, the Mishnah is sometimes called Shas, an acronym for Shisha Sederim, the Six Orders, though that term is more often used for the Talmud as a whole. The six orders are Zaraim, seeds, dealing with prayer and blessings, tithes and agricultural laws, eleven tractates, Moed, festival, pertaining to the laws of the Sabbath and the festivals, twelve tractates, Nishim. Women, concerning marriage and divorce, some forms of oaths and the laws of the Nazarite, seven tractates. Nezikin, damages, dealing with civil and criminal law, the functioning of the courts and oaths, ten tractates. Kodashim, holy things, regarding sacrificial rites, the temple, and the dietary laws, eleven tractates, and Tahorat, purities. Pertaining to the laws of purity and impurity, including the impurity of the dead, the laws of food purity and bodily purity, twelve tractates in each order, with the exception of Zaraim, tractates are arranged from biggest in number of chapters to smallest. A popular mnemonic consists of the acronym Zeman Nakat. The Babylonian Talmud, Hagiga 14a, states that there were either 600 or 700 orders of the Mishnah. Hillel the Elder organized them into six orders to make it easier to remember. The historical accuracy of this tradition is disputed. There is also a tradition that Ezra the scribe dictated from memory not only the 24 books of the Tanakh but 60 esoteric books. It is not known whether this is a reference to the Mishnah, but there is a case for saying that the Mishnah does consist of 60 tractates. The current total is 63, but Makat was originally part of Sanhedrin, and Bava Kama, Bava Metzia and Bava Batra may be regarded as subdivisions of a single tractate Nezikin. Ruvain Margolis posited that there were originally seven orders of Mishnah, citing a Ga'anic tradition on the existence of a seventh order containing the laws of Sta -M scribal practice and Barakat blessings. Omissions <inaudible> 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 <Omissions. inaudible> A number of important laws are not elaborated upon in the Mishnah. These include the laws of zitzit, tefillin, phylacteries, mezuzo, the holiday of Hanukkah, and the laws of conversion to Judaism. These were later discussed in the minor tractates. Nisim ben Jacob's Hakdamala. Maftich Hatamid argued that it was unnecessary for Judah the prince to discuss them as many of these laws were so well known. 
Margolis suggests that as the Mishnah was redacted after the Bar Kokhba revolt, Judah could not have included discussion of Hanukkah, which commemorates the Jewish revolt against the Seleucid Empire the Romans would not have tolerated this overt nationalism. Similarly, there were then several decrees in place aimed at suppressing outward signs of national identity, including decrees against wearing tefillin and zitzit. As conversion to Judaism was against Roman law, Judah would not have discussed this. David Zvi Hoffman suggests that there existed ancient texts analogous to the present day Shulchan Aruch that discussed the basic laws of day to day living, and it was therefore not necessary to focus on these laws in the Mishnah. Mishnah, Gemara, and Talmud Topic. Rabbinic commentaries on the Mishnah from the next four centuries, done in the land of Israel and in Babylonia, were eventually redacted and compiled as well. In themselves they are known as Gemara. The books which set out the Mishnah in its original structure, together with the associated Gemara, are known as Talmuds. Two Talmuds were compiled, the Babylonian Talmud to which the term Talmud normally refers and the Jerusalem Talmud. Unlike the Hebrew Mishnah, the Gemara is written primarily in Aramaic. Topic. Content and purpose Topic. The Mishnah teaches the oral traditions by example, presenting actual cases being brought to judgment, usually along with the debate on the matter and the judgment that was given by a notable rabbi based on halakha, mitzvah, and spirit of the teaching Torah, that guided his decision. In this way, it brings to everyday reality the practice of the mitzvah as presented in the Torah, and aims to cover all aspects of human living, serve as an example for future judgments, and, most important, demonstrate pragmatic exercise of the biblical laws, which was much needed since the time when the Second Temple was destroyed 70 CE. The Mishnah does not claim to be the development of new laws, but rather the collection of existing traditions. The term, Mishnah, is related to the verb, Shana to teach or repeat, and to the adjectives, sheni, and mishnah, meaning, second. It is thus named for being both the one written authority codex secondary only to the Tanakh as a basis for the passing of judgment, a source and a tool for creating laws, and the first of many books to complement the Tanakh in certain aspects. Topic. Oral law Topic. Before the publication of the Mishnah, Jewish scholarship and judgment were predominantly oral, as according to the Talmud, it was not permitted to write them down. The earliest recorded oral law may have been of the Midrashic form, in which halakhic discussion is structured as exegetical commentary on the Torah. Rabbis expounded on and debated the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, without the benefit of written works other than the biblical books themselves, though some may have made private notes Majilstrim for example of court decisions. The oral traditions were far from monolithic, and varied among various schools, the most famous of which were the House of Shammai and the House of Hillel. After First Jewish-Roman War in 70 CE, with the end of the Second Temple Jewish Center in Jerusalem, Jewish social and legal norms were in upheaval. The rabbis were faced with the new reality of Judaism without a temple to serve as the center of teaching and study and Judea without autonomy. It is during this period that rabbinic discourse began to be recorded in writing. The possibility was felt that the details of the oral traditions of the Pharisees from the Second Temple period 530s BCE 70 CE would be forgotten, so the justification was found to have these oral laws transcribed. Over time, different traditions of the oral law came into being, raising problems of interpretation. According to the Mevo HaTamid many rulings were given in a specific context, but would be taken out of it, or a ruling was revisited but the second ruling would not become popularly known. To correct this, Judah the prince took up the redaction of the Mishnah. If a point was of no conflict, he kept its language, where there was conflict, he reordered the opinions and ruled, and he clarified where context was not given. The idea was not to use his own discretion, but rather to examine the tradition as far back as he could, and only supplement as required. Topic. The Mishnah and the Hebrew Bible Topic. According to Rabbinic Judaism, the Oral Torah Hebrew, Tur Spaunational, was given to Moses with the Torah at Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb as an exposition to the latter. 
The accumulated traditions of the oral law, expounded by scholars in each generation from Moses onward, is considered as the necessary basis for the interpretation, and often for the reading, of the written law. Jews sometimes refer to this as the Masara Hebrew, swur roughly translated as tradition, though that word is often used in a narrower sense to mean traditions concerning the editing and reading of the biblical text, see Masoretic text. The resulting Jewish law and custom is called halakha. While most discussions in the Mishnah concern the correct way to carry out laws recorded in the Torah, it usually presents its conclusions without explicitly linking them to any scriptural passage, though scriptural quotations do occur. For this reason it is arranged in order of topics rather than in the form of a biblical commentary. In a very few cases, there is no scriptural source at all and the law is described as Halakha Lemoshe Misenai, Law to Moses from Sinai. The Midrash Halakha, by contrast, while presenting similar laws, does so in the form of a biblical commentary and explicitly links its conclusions to details in the biblical text. These Midrashim often predate the Mishnah. The Mishnah also quotes the Torah for principles not associated with law, but just as practical advice, even at times for humor or as guidance for understanding historical debates. Rejection Topic. Some Jews did not accept the codification of the oral law at all. Karaite Judaism, for example, recognized only the Tanakh as authoritative in Halakha Jewish religious law and theology. It vehemently rejected the codification of the Oral Torah in the Mishnah and Talmud and subsequent works of mainstream Rabbinic Judaism which maintained that the Talmud was an authoritative interpretations of the Torah. Karaites maintained that all of the divine commandments handed down to Moses by God were recorded in the written Torah without additional oral law or explanation. As a result, Karaiti Jews did not accept as binding the written collections of the oral tradition in the Midrash or Talmud. The Karaites comprised a significant portion of the world Jewish population in the 10th and 11th centuries CE, and remain extant, although they currently number in the thousands. Authorship Topic. The rabbis who contributed to the Mishnah are known as the Tanaim, of whom approximately 120 are known. The period during which the Mishnah was assembled spanned about 130 years, or five generations, in the 1st and 2nd centuries CE. Judah the Prince is credited with the final redaction and publication of the Mishnah, although there have been a few additions since his time, those passages that cite him or his grandson, Judah II, and the end of Tractate Soda, which refers to the period after Judah the Prince's death. One must also note that in addition to redacting the Mishnah, Judah the Prince and his court also ruled on which opinions should be followed, though the rulings do not always appear in the text. Most of the Mishnah is related without attribution stamp. This usually indicates that many sages taught so, or that Judah the prince ruled so. The halakhic ruling usually follows that view. Sometimes, however, it appears to be the opinion of a single sage, and the view of the sages collectively Hebrew, hikmaim hachimim, is given separately. As Judah the prince went through the tractates, the Mishnah was set forth, but throughout his life some parts were updated as new information came to light. Because of the proliferation of earlier versions, it was deemed too hard to retract anything already released, and therefore a second version of certain laws were released. The Talmud refers to these differing versions as Mishnah Rishona, first Mishnah, and Mishnah Acharona, last Mishnah. David Zvi Hoffman suggests that Mishnah Rishona actually refers to texts from earlier sages upon which Rabbi based his Mishnah. The Talmud records a tradition that unattributed statements of the law represent the views of Rabbi Meir Sanhedrin 86a, which supports the theory recorded by Sharira Gaon in his famous Igorot that he was the author of an earlier collection. For this reason, the few passages that actually say, This is the view of Rabbi Meir, represent cases where the author intended to present Rabbi Meir's view as a minority opinion, not representing the accepted law. There are also references to the Mishnah of Rabbi Akiva, suggesting a still earlier collection. On the other hand, these references may simply mean his teachings in general. Another possibility is that Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Meir established the divisions and order of subjects in the Mishnah, making them the authors of a school curriculum rather than of a book. Authorities are divided on whether Rabbi Judah the Prince recorded the Mishnah in writing or established it as an oral text for memorization. 
The most important early account of its composition, the Igorot Rav Sharira Gaon Epistle of Rabbi Sharira Gaon is ambiguous on the point, although the Spanish recension leans to the theory that the Mishnah was written. However, the Talmud records that, in every study session, there was a person called the Tana appointed to recite the Mishnah passage under discussion. This may indicate that, even if the Mishnah was reduced to writing, it was not available on general distribution. Mishnah studies Topic Topic Textual variants Topic Very roughly there are two traditions of Mishnah text One is found in manuscripts and printed editions of the Mishnah on its own or as part of the Jerusalem Talmud the other is found in manuscripts and editions of the Babylonian Talmud, though there is sometimes a difference between the text of a whole paragraph printed at the beginning of a discussion which may be edited to conform with the text of the Mishnah-only editions and the line-by-line -line citations in the course of the discussion. Robert Brody, in his Mishnah and Tosefta Studies Jerusalem 2014, warns against oversimplifying the picture by assuming that the Mishnah-only tradition is always the more authentic, or that it represents a Palestinian as against a Babylonian tradition. Manuscripts from the Cairo Geniza, or citations in other works, may support either type of reading or other readings altogether. Manuscripts Printed editions the first printed edition of the Mishnah was published in Naples. There have been many subsequent editions, including the late 19th century Vilna edition, which is the basis of the editions now used by the religious public. Vocalized editions were published in Italy, culminating in the edition of David ben Solomon Altaras, P.U.B.L. Venice 1737. The Altaras edition was republished in Mantua in 1777, in Pisa in 1797 and 1810 and in Livorno in many editions from 1823 until 1936. Reprints of the vocalized Livorno editions were published in Israel in 1913, 1962, 1968 and 1976. These editions show some textual variants by bracketing doubtful words and passages, though they do not attempt detailed textual criticism. The Livorno editions are the basis of the Sephardic tradition for recitation. As well as being printed on its own, the Mishnah is included in all editions of the Babylonian and Jerusalem Talmuds. Each paragraph is printed on its own, and followed by the relevant Gemara discussion. However, that discussion itself often cites the Mishnah line by line. While the text printed in paragraph form has generally been standardized to follow the Vilna edition, the text cited line by line in the Gemara often preserves important variants, which sometimes reflect the readings of older manuscripts. The nearest approach to a critical edition is that of Hanich Albeck. There is also an edition by Yosef Kafi of the Mishnah together with the commentary of Maimonides, which compares the base text used by Maimonides with the Napoli and Vilna editions and other sources. Topic. Oral traditions and pronunciation Topic. The Mishnah was and still is traditionally studied through recitation out loud. Jewish communities around the world preserved local melodies for chanting the Mishnah, and distinctive ways of pronouncing its words. Many medieval manuscripts of the Mishnah are vowelized, and some of these, especially some fragments found in the Geniza, are partially annotated with Tiberian cantillation marks. Today, many communities have a special tune for the Mishnah passage, Bama Madlikan. In the Friday night service, there may also be tunes for Mishnah passages in other parts of the liturgy, such as the passages in the daily prayers relating to sacrifices and incense and the paragraphs recited at the end of the Musaf service on Shabbat. Otherwise, there is often a customary intonation used in the study of Mishnah or Talmud, somewhat similar to an Arabic mawal, but this is not reduced to a precise system like that for the biblical books. In some traditions, this intonation is the same as or similar to that used for the Passover Haggadah. Recordings have been made for Israeli national archives, and Frank Alvarez Perer has published a book length study of the Syrian tradition of Mishnah reading on the basis of these recordings. Most vowelized editions of the Mishnah today reflect standard Ashkenazic vowelization, and often contain mistakes. 
The Albeck edition of the Mishnah was vowelized by Hanok Yalin, who made careful eclectic use of both medieval manuscripts and current oral traditions of pronunciation from Jewish communities all over the world. The Albeck edition includes an introduction by Yalin detailing his eclectic method. Two institutes at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem have collected major oral archives which hold among other things, extensive recordings of Jews chanting the Mishnah using a variety of melodies and many different kinds of pronunciation. These institutes are the Jewish Oral Traditions Research Center and the National Voice Archives the Phonoteca at the Jewish National and University Library. See below for external links. Topic. Commentaries. Topic. The two main commentaries on the Mishnah are the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud. Neither work covers the whole Mishnah, but each work is on about 50-70% of the text. The reason that the Talmud is not usually viewed as a commentary on the Mishnah, is because it also has many other goals, and can get involved in long tangential discussions. However, the main purpose of the Talmud is as a commentary on the Mishnah. In 1168, Maimonides Rambam published a comprehensive commentary on the Mishnah. It was written in transliterated Judeo-Arabic using Hebrew letters and was one of the first commentaries of its kind. In it, Rambam condensed the associated Talmudical debates, and offered his conclusions in a number of undecided issues. Of particular significance are the various introductory sections, as well as the introduction to the work itself. These are widely quoted in other works on the Mishnah, and on the oral law in general. Perhaps the most famous is his introduction to the 10th chapter of Tractate Sanhedrin where he enumerates the 13 fundamental beliefs of Judaism. Rabbi Samson of Sens France was, apart from Maimonides, one of the few rabbis of the early medieval era to compose a Mishnah commentary on some tractates. It is printed in many editions of the Mishnah. It is interwoven with his commentary on major parts of the Tosefta. The Rosh's commentary on some tractates the Miri's commentary on most of the Mishnah Rabbi Obadiah ben Abraham of Bertinoro 15th century wrote one of the most popular Mishnah commentaries. He draws on Maimonides' work but also offers Talmudical material in effect a summary of the Talmudic discussion largely following the commentary of Rashi. In addition to its role as a commentary on the Mishnah, this work is often referenced by students of Talmud as a review text, and is often referred to as the Bartanora or the Ra. V. Yomtiv Lipman Heller wrote a commentary called Tosafo Yom Tov. In the introduction Heller says that his aim is to make additions to Bertinoro's commentary. The glosses are sometimes quite detailed and analytic. That is why it is sometimes compared to the Tosafo, discussions of Babylonian Gemara by French and German scholars of the 12th-13th centuries. In many compact Mishnah printings, a condensed version of his commentary, titled Iker Tosafo Yom Tov, is featured. An 11th-century CE commentary of the Mishnah, composed by Rabbi Nathan ben Abraham, president of the Academy in Eretz Israel. This relatively unheard of commentary was first printed in Israel in 1955. Other Akaranim who have written Mishnah commentaries The Melichet Shlomo Rav Shlomo Adeni, early 17th century Hunashir by Emanuel High Ritchie Amsterdam 1731 The Vilna Gaon Shino Eliyahu on parts of the Mishnah, and glosses Eliyahu Rabbah, Chittishe Hagra, Mayoros Hagra Rabbi Akiva Iger glosses, rather than a commentary the Mishnah Rishona on Zaraim and the Mishnah Acharona on Tahorat Rav Ephraim Yitzchak from Premishla. The Sidre Tahorat on Kelam and Ohalot the commentary on the rest of Tahorat and on Ediyat is lost by Gershon Henik Liner, the Radziner Rebbe The Gulat Ilyo Rav Dov Ber Lifshitz on Mikvo The Ahavat Eaton by Rav Avraham Abba Krenitz the great-grandfather of Rav Malkiel Kotler The Chazan Ish on Zaraim and Tahorat a prominent commentary from the 19th century is Tiferet Yisrael by Rabbi Israel Lipschitz. It is subdivided into two parts, one more general and the other more analytical, titled Yachin and Boaz respectively after two large pillars in the temple in Jerusalem. Although Rabbi Lipschitz has faced some controversy in certain Hasidic circles, he was greatly respected by such sages as Rabbi Akiva Iger, whom he frequently cites, and is widely accepted in the yeshiva world. 
The Tiferet Yaakov is an important gloss on the Tiferet Yisrael. Simha Petrushka's commentary was written in Yiddish in 1945 published in Montreal. Its vocalization is supposed to be of high quality. The commentary by Rabbi Pinhas Kahati, which is written in modern Israeli Hebrew and based on classical and contemporary works, has become popular in the late 20th century. The commentary is designed to make the Mishnah accessible to a wide readership. Each tractate is introduced with an overview of its contents, including historical and legal background material, and each Mishnah is prefaced by a thematic introduction. The current version of this edition is printed with the Bartonora commentary as well as Kahati's. The encyclopedic editions put out by Mishnat Rav Aharon BEI's Medrosho Govoa, Lakewood on PEAH, Shevit, Hala, and Yadiam. The above-mentioned edition edited by Hanok Albeck and vocalized by Hanok Yellen 1952 includes the former's extensive commentary on each Mishnah, as well as introductions to each tractate and order Seder. This commentary tends to focus on the meaning of the Mishnayo themselves, without as much reliance on the Gemara's interpretation and is, therefore, considered valuable as a tool for the study of Mishnah as an independent work. Rabbi Yehuda Lieb Ginsberg wrote a commentary on ethical issues, Musar Hamishnah. The commentary appears for the entire text except for Tahorat and Kodashim. Shmuel Safrai, Chana Safrai and Ziev Safrai have half completed a 45-volume socio-historic commentary, Mishnat Eretz Yisrael. As a historical source both the Mishnah and Talmud contain little serious biographical studies of the people discussed therein, and the same tractate will conflate the points of view of many different people. Yet, sketchy biographies of the Mishnaic sages can often be constructed with historical detail from Talmudic and Midrashic sources. According to the Encyclopedia Judaica second edition, it is accepted that Judah the prince added, deleted, and rewrote his source material during the process of redacting the Mishnah. Modern authors who have provided examples of these changes include J.N. Epstein and S. Friedman. Following Judah the Prince's redaction, there remained a number of different versions of the Mishnah in circulation. The Mishnah used in the Babylonian rabbinic community differing markedly from that used in the Palestinian one. Indeed, within these rabbinic communities themselves, there are indications of different versions being used for study. These differences are shown in divergent citations of individual Mishnah passages in the Talmud Yerushalmi and the Talmud Bavli, and in variances of medieval manuscripts and early editions of the Mishnah. The best known examples of these differences is found in J. N. Epstein's introduction to the text of the Mishnah 1948. .Epstein has also concluded that the period of the Amoraim was one of further deliberate changes to the text of the Mishnah, which he views as attempts to return the text to what was regarded as its original form. These lessened over time, as the text of the Mishnah became more and more regarded as authoritative. Many modern historical scholars have focused on the timing and the formation of the Mishnah. A vital question is whether it is composed of sources which date from its editor's lifetime, and to what extent is it composed of earlier, or later sources. Are Mishnaic disputes distinguishable along theological or communal lines, and in what ways do different sections derive from different schools of thought within early Judaism? Can these early sources be identified, and if so, how? In response to these questions, modern scholars have adopted a number of different approaches. Some scholars hold that there has been extensive editorial reshaping of the stories and statements within the Mishnah and later, in the Talmud, lacking outside confirming texts, they hold that we cannot confirm the origin or date of most statements and laws, and that we can say little for certain about their authorship. In this view, the questions above are impossible to answer. See, for example, the works of Louis Jacobs, Baruch M. Boxer, Shay J. D. Cohen, Stephen D. Fraud. Some scholars hold that the Mishnah and Talmud have been extensively shaped by later editorial redaction, but that it contains sources which we can identify and describe with some level of reliability. In this view, sources can be identified to some extent because each era of history and each distinct geographical region has its own unique feature, which one can trace and analyze. Thus, the questions above may be analyzed. See, for example, the works of Goodblit, Lee Levine, David C. Kremer and Robert Goldenberg.
Some scholars hold that many or most of the statements and events described in the Mishnah and Talmud usually occurred more or less as described, and that they can be used as serious sources of historical study. In this view, historians do their best to tease out later editorial editions itself a very difficult task and skeptically view accounts of miracles, leaving behind a reliable historical text. See, for example, the works of Saul Lieberman, David Weiss Halivni, Avraham Goldberg and Dov Zolotnik. Topic. Cultural references Topic. A notable literary work on the composition of the Mishnah is Milton Steinberg's novel As a Driven Leaf. Topic. See also Topic. Mishnah Yomis — Daily Cycle of Mishnah Studying Barida Jewish Commentaries on the Bible Mishnah Torah Tosefta Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. English translations Topic. Philip Blackman. Mishnaoth. The Judaica Press, Ltd., reprinted 2000 ISBN 978-0-910818-00-1. Online PDF at Hebrewbooks, Zaraim, Moed, Nashim, Nezikin, Kodashim, Tahorat. Herbert Danby. The Mishnah. Oxford, 1933 ISBN 0-19815402-X. Jacob Neusner. The Mishnah, A New Translation. New Haven, Reprint 1991 ISBN 0-300-05022-4. Various Editors. The Mishnah, A New Translation with Commentary Yad Avraham. New York, Mesora Publishers, Since the 1980s. Yosef Milstein plus Various Editors, The Mishnah, A New Integrated Translation and Commentary Based on Rabinu Ovidia Mbartanora, Machen Yisrael Trust, Available Online at amishnah.com. Topic. Historical study Topic. Shalom Karmi ed. Modern Scholarship in the Study of Torah, Contributions and Limitations Jason Aronson, Inc. Shea J. D. Cohen. Patriarchs and Scholarchs. Proceedings of the American Academy for Jewish Research 48 1981, pp. 57-87 Stephen D. Fraud. The Early Rabbinic Sage. In the Sage in Israel and the Ancient Near East, ed. John G. Gami and Leo G. Perdue, Winona Lake, Indiana, Eisenbrowns, 1990, pp. 417 to 23. Robert Goldenberg, The Sabbath Law of Rabbi Mayer, Missoula, Montana, Scholars Press, 1978. John W. McGinley, The Written. As the Vocation of Conceiving Jewishly, ISBN 0 to 595 x Jacob Neusner Making the Classics in Judaism Atlanta, Scholars Press, 1989, pp. 1-13 and 19-44 Jacob Neusner Judaism, The Evidence of the Mishnah Chicago, University of Chicago Press, 1981, pp. 14-22 Gary Porton, The Traditions of Rabbi Ishmael Leiden, E. J. Brill, 1982, Vol. 4, pp. 212-25 Dov Zolotnik, The Iron Pillar Mishnah, Jerusalem, Bialik Institute, 1988, pp. 8 9. Ruvain Margolis, Yesid Ha Mishnah Verachata, Heb. David Tzvi Hoffman, Mishnah Rishona Ufluktha Datana, Heb Hanok Yalan, Mavola Nikid Ha Mishnah, Introduction to the Vocalization of the Mishnah, Jerusalem 1964, Heb Robert Brody, Mishnah and Tosefta Studies, Jerusalem 2014. Topic Recitation Topic Frank Alvarez Pereira, La Transmission Orale de la Mishnah. Un méthode d'analyse appliquée à la tradition de l'EP, Jerusalem 1990 topic External links topic topic Wikimedia projects topic Media related to Mishnah at Wikimedia Commons Works related to Mishnah at Wikisource Hebrew Wikisource has original text related to this article, Menach Wikisource's Open Mishnah Project is developing Mishnah texts, commentaries, and translations. 
The project is currently available in four languages, Hebrew the largest collection, English, French and Portuguese. Topic digitized manuscripts Topic Complete Mishnah Manuscript 15th century CE, Cambridge Digital Library Topic Other electronic texts Topic Learn Mishnah in someone's memory, create a slasha Mishnah list online. Mekan Mamra Hebrew, Hebrew text of the Mishnah according to Maimonides' version based on the manuscript of his Mishnah commentary in his own handwriting. The structured Mishnah, Hebrew text according to the Albeck edition without vowels with special formatting. Online treasury of Talmudic manuscripts, Jewish National and University Library in Hebrew. Codex Kaufman of the Mishnah, high-resolution images of this important textual witness. A Mishnah, English translation and commentary. Topic Mishnah study and the daily Mishnah topic Aaron, Aaron 2004. Limed Menach Wur Menach Beat Hish Mishnah Study and Study Groups in Modern Times PDF. Jewish Studies, an Internet Journal in Hebrew, 3. Mishnah Yomit at the Wayback Machine archived 10 October 2011 1 Mishnah per day. Note, this study cycle follows a different schedule than the regular one, contains extensive archives in English. Mishnah Yomit, Mishnahayomit.com hosts a weekly publication complementing the learning of people studying the regular program. It include articles, review questions and learning aids. Kahati Mishnah at the Wayback Machine archived June 25, 2003 a program of two Mishnayo per day. Currently inactive, but archives contain the complete text of Kahati in English for Moed, Nashim, Nezikan, and about half of Kodashim. Doff Yomi Review at the Wayback Machine archived the 29th of August 2018 custom learning and review programs for Mishnah. Mishnah's Dora, popular edition of Hebrew text with vowels, used in many schools, formatted to encourage review and aid memory. Tables summarizing content. Mishnah songs and recordings. Wiki article in Hebrew Mishnah S. Dura Perak Hayomi Hebrew host to Shiram, and learning and review according to the Perak Hayomi in Mishnah instituted by the Meharal. Two Mishnahs a day, a program of learning two Mishnayos every day. Site include Hebrew and English together with a link for audio for each day. Topic. Audio lectures Topic. Rav Avraham Kosman, Slobodka on the Mishnah and Talmud in English, produced in Israel. Mishnah audio, given by Rabbi Chaim Brown in English. Rav Grossman on the Mishnah in English produced in Los Angeles Download all six tractates of Mishnah for free on TorahDownloads.com Oral traditions and pronunciation The National Sound Archives at the Hebrew University catalog not currently online. Tradition and relevance – recordings of Seder Zerim in Syrian tradition.